the bridge that he can build between the, the prehistoric and the contemporary is, is certainly important. I mean, he's taken, his roots are very strongly in the Southwestern prehistory, but you know, to take that form, uh, to move away from copying it, to make it something uniquely his own, and to make a statement that is also uniquely contemporary uh, is very important. One of the things that fascinated me about the old stuff was, you know, being able to just hike across the desert, pick up a piece of pottery and see these fingerprints in there, you know, that are 900,000 years old. Well, it was back in, uh, let's see, 79, I guess it was, or 78, the end of 78, where I, I was working at this mission school in Arizona. Uh, we, we just started going out. I'd take the kids out in the desert in the back of the truck, and we'd go out looking around for clays. And, and out there, you know, you'd, we'd stumble across these ruins. They're all over the place out there. And here would be the pottery shear just laying on the surface. All the pots in this region, if they're traditionally done, are coil built. But no one uses coils that are essentially like strings of spaghetti. I mean, he, he hand rolls everything, pinches the coils by hand. Uh, and I think that even after the years of, of uh, accomplishment and attention that he's gotten, you would expect to see people copying his work, but you don't yet. Gathering clay, the whole process going out, um, I went out with a um, with a friend and um, a Hopi medicine man just not too long ago to gather some clay. They wanted some clay and they asked me, you know, where some local clays were that they wanted to build something. And I took them to a special site and I knew, you know, that they, were, they would make an offering and I brought a little offering too of my own in their Hopi language and in their um, gift, you know, they were thanking the earth. And when I went there to show them, I took some tobacco and I offered it and I gave thanks to the Creator you know for making it you know when you're from the land when your ancestors are buried here and, and lived here um, for you know thousands of years you there's a, a respect that comes from the from the earth for the earth itself that's given you life uh, it's very easy to get a, a prima donna complex when you get lots of attention and you sell out all your shows and all that kind of thing but he uh, those, those material-centered sort of things don't really phase Richard. The pot becomes much more strong once you, you curve it in a little bit. It gives it some stability. You know, that sphere, you know, that... Uh, it gives it much more strength, and your life becomes that way once you kind of round that midlife point. And when, if you survive, you, know, it's, you become a stronger person. If a pot sits in a gallery and it speaks volumes about an individual on some spiritual level, um, I think that artwork that can do that sings to people, truly. All Native American people knew there was a, a supreme being, you know, I mean it was pretty mysterious, pretty hard to understand, and nobody really tried to grab it or put it in a box like we do uh, in this day and age. But. You know, the concepts are always there, and there was always an acknowledgement that there's some being that's above all.